Well, if you're a diehard Yankee fan, how does it feel? Seems like Boone and Cashman are both coming back. Is that what you've drawn out of 100%. this? 100%. Boone, listen, Aaron Boone was in the Bronx yesterday. Yeah. Uh, he drove there. They clearly had meetings yesterday. The result of those meetings are that Phil Nevin, dead. Marcus Timms, dead. Aaron Boone, not dead. And if Aaron Boone's not being brought back, that would have happened in yesterday's meeting. Don't you Because they would do it face-to-face. They're not, they're not douches. Well, they don't pick up the phone and say, oh, by the way... You know, come get your stuff next Wednesday, right? Well, there's a lot of things, though, to this. Number one, Aaron Boone has a choice. He has a contract that runs out in a few weeks. And while I don't think he's going to be the hottest managerial candidate out there, I think he's a guy who's going to get a lot of interviews. I mean, I, I can see why the Padres would have some interest in him. And then number two, right now they're firing not just his coaches, Craig, but Phil Nevin is one of his best friends. Dead. Right? He's dead. Dead. So I wonder from Aaron Boone's perspective. You think he's going to say, well, I'm not coming back since you fired Phil Nevin? Come on. I think that's a possibility. Not even close to being a possibility. There's two chances for Aaron Boone. He could go back to television, which you've admitted, you've been saying, and I've been saying he has that option. And number two, he could say, I'll go manage elsewhere. Do I think that's going to happen for the record? No. No. I think Boone's likely to come back. But until there's an official announcement... We don't know what the Yankees' intentions are or what Boone's intentions are. L- listen, if uh, Aaron Boone wants to manage or continue to manage, and you have to believe he does, right? Right. Um, if the Yankees are willing to bring him back, he's coming back to the Yankees for a gazillion reasons. Uh, among them, he's got children who are still in school. He's uh, made a home for them on the Northeast. Um the reality that if he ever does want to do TV again, it's easier to go from New York Yankee manager than any other job in baseball manager, maybe Mets aside, right? right the right. New York media market. Now, if you're telling me that the Yankees are vacillating on it right. and he wants to manage and you believe that what his agent put out there a couple of days ago is accurate, that the Padres would give him a look-see, which was uh, you know, kind of belittled a little bit in yesterday's report from one of the baseball insiders that the Padres have a short list of guys and his name wasn't on that short list. Right. Doesn't mean that's accurate either, but if you play out the fact, if Aaron Boone wants to continue to manage, the best place for him is right where he's at. Oh, absolutely. So my belief is this. I'm not saying I'm right. I've mm-hmm. not talked to Aaron about it, nor have I talked to the Yankees about it, but if you'd like, I'll reach out to him, okay? Here's the deal. They clearly had meetings yesterday. The immediate result of those meetings is Phil Nevin. Dead. Marcus Timms. Dead. And uh, the assistant hitting coach, who no one knows who that is anyway, also dead. Right. Three guys, there's three bodies in the Bronx right now, and Aaron Boone's not among them, meaning they brought him in the way I see it. They sat down, and they went over the coaching staff. And he had a chance, I'm sure, to fight for his guys. And But when he left the office yesterday, he left with the knowledge that those guys were dead. Now, if you're going to fire Aaron Boone, and it's their right to do it or not bring him Re- back. Not renew his right, contract. Not renew his contract, sure. which is the same thing as being fired. I've lived that life. <laughs> I know what it is. Hi, W N E W. All right? <laughs> if that's going to happen, you do it yesterday in person. Yeah, but here's you don't what. bring the guy in, discuss the coaching staff, Fire three guys, well, but you're taking, and then two days later, fire both. All right, so there's a couple of leaps that you're taking here that I'm not sure of, because one of the things I read into this is that the Yankees agree with something I've been saying for a while, and that's who manages this team is completely overrated. Okay. I think they're looking at this job as a lower-level position. I, I really do. So I don't think Aaron Boone was necessarily in on the discussions to fire Phil Nevin. I don't even think he was a part of those discussions. Brian Cashman and a lot of others who have voices in the Yankee organization talked it over and said, All right, what are we going to do? We, we have to make a decision at some point. Yeah, we got to get rid of Phil Nevin. That'll give the Yankee fans some blood. And that's because the blood of, you want because of the sending of Judge, plus the sure. 21 or 22 other um, outs at home right. plate this year, which is a ridiculous record. Absolutely. The right. other thing is the Yankees' biggest failure this season is they didn't hit. So let's get rid of the hitting coach. I don't think... Aaron Boone is in on these discussions because I think the Yankees view the manager job, I hate to say it the way I view the manager's job, which is it's a lower no, level he's, position, he's dude. He's in on it from a stand. They may have told him. Well, they told him after they decided. They, they clear the reason he's in the Bronx yesterday and the announcement is today is because that was the conversation right, yesterday. It being told. 
Well, that's fine. I'm not, not gonna saying, that. I don't hey, know either way. What but, do you think? And that's why I don't think it's crazy. Well, it could have gone like this. It could have gone also like, we've made this decision. Right. We recognize you're friends with Phil Nevin. May I assume friendly with Marcus Timms. Uh, are you comfortable coming back? With us appointing other people in those spots. Right. I could have gone that way. But to me, that's semantics. They're dead. And now. But I don't think Aaron Boone is having a big voice in this whole thing. And I think it's very possible that as we sit here nine days after that wild card game, that they haven't even decided if they want to bring him back or not. I think by now they have. Then why hasn't it been announced? Yeah, that, Are they negotiating with his agent? Obviously, he needs a new contract. Uh, Where is that? A, he does need a new contract. Right. It's going to be a multi year deal. Uh, I would think two years minimum, maybe three, but two years seems to make the most sense. Maybe there's some kind of option on it on top of that. But I would think Aaron Boone has a two-year deal with the one-year option, which allows for success, right? Not having to renegotiate off of success either. If he fails, he's gone. Everyone would know that. Um, that's my gut. Now, to answer your – there's no – you're going to ask a question right now of me that has no answer because I don't know the answer, which is what are we waiting for? Like, why haven't they made an announcement one way or the other? Here's what I'm going to go back on, though. I am going to go back on Hal Steinbrenner's only public quote that I know of mm -hmm. uh, during the course of this season when it was clear the Yankees were not living up to hype and expectations. And he said, while I take some responsibility, and Brian certainly does, and Aaron certainly does, I put the bulk of it on the players. That's the owner. The owner did come out this year and say yeah. uh, that I blame the players. And we'll take a little piece of that blame because we picked those players and Aaron manages those players, but I'm blaming the players. So if you go back to the only public comment made by the owner of the team, nobody should be surprised if the owner decides the manager and GM are coming back to run it back one more year, maybe two, who knows, and we're going to try to get and, better players. And, and that's the key. The, That's term, I see it. the term run it back, I think, annoys a lot of Yankee fans because they look at this team, they look at their lineup at the end of the season, they look at the results and say, you can't run it back. Running it back with the manager is not the thing that should scare you. Running it back with the same players, now that should scare you. I get it. Here in the middle of October, the blood, the only blood you could get is the manager of the team. That's the blood that would make some Yankee fans happy, and you could cite individual moves that drove you nuts throughout the season. But the problem with the New York Yankees, it's not Aaron Boone. It's not. Right. The problem with the New York Yankees are the players. So don't let run it back scare you. Now, if they run it back with the same roster, with the same exact core, where Joey Gallo's hitting cleanup on opening day, scream and yell. Scream and yell. Yell, be upset. But the whole manager thing, and I think the Yankees view it this way, too. They realize that's not going to decide the future of this franchise. Getting better players, that's going to decide this franchise. I agree. That's why I laugh. I actually giggle out loud when people talk about it. It's even in an article today about the amazing Alex Cora. The Red Sox have the same record as the Yankees. Now, it's postseason is different, obviously. They beat the Yankees. Uh, they beat Tampa. They're, going, they're in the ALCS. I get all that. But it's not like the Red Sox won 110 games this year. They didn't. They won the same exact number of games the Yankees won. So listen, here, you know what the difference uh, is. Just quickly happening. about Cora, though, because yeah. I get what you're saying, and I'm not even disagreeing with you. But there is an illusion. Well, it's that an illusion. Alex Therefore, Cora it's not real. makes guys and this team better because how bad the Red Sox were a year ago, and it's hey, Cora's back, and boom, we're back in the ALCS. I don't think Alex Cora is making a 15-game difference with this team. I agree with you. Thank but you. I think a big part of why that's said... I don't care what these people think. It's an illusion. Okay. Alex Cora, I think, is the same exact guy as Aaron Boone. Well, uh, they won games because their players you, played You minimized better, it a little bit too right? much. They won games because our race stunk and their guys got hits. That's why the Yankees aren't still playing baseball. A lot of that Not because Aaron Boone mismanaged the one-game wild card game against the Red Sox. If anything, Aaron Boone's managerial decisions gave them a chance to even be in that game, let alone maybe win it when Garrett Cole didn't show up the way he managed uh, certain games down the stretch. But I'm with you, essentially. Uh, the players stunk. Period. Stop. Go get better players. That's the story of how the Yankees are going to get better. Go get better players. And for any Yankee fan that wants this blood... Enjoy it. You got it to Phil Nevin. You got it to Marcus Timms. You may still get it from the manager, but don't think for a second that replacing the manager with the same exact kind of guy, that's the other thing. Who do you think you're replacing Aaron Boone with? 
What are you, delusional to think they're going to hire Buck Showalter and that's going to change everything? You think that? It's not. Do you think that? I know you don't think that. I'm talking to those other oh, Yankee fans. Sometimes I feel like you're talking they to me. Because you look at me and you say you. So I would say sometimes I feel like when you look at me and say you, that you're talking to me and I'm like, I don't never espouse that belief. And then it dawns on me that you're just being you. I am you. You're using you as far as everyone else you. listening, right. and you don't mean it towards me. Not you. Yeah. You. Because I pointing. do times I get ready to, I go, oh, he's not talking to me. <laughs> That's right. He knows full well where I stand on these things. <laughs> Meanwhile, so the Yankees uh, now are in play, and maybe over the course of the next couple hours, we do get the answer. It seems like if you're going to make decisions and moves regarding the coaching staff, you just do it all in one day. Like, you pull the bandit off, you rip that thing off, you don't slowly you're, pull it you're off. You're so right, but you know what? I think what this proves, at least this is my speculation on what it proves, is that the Yankees don't think the manager job matters. And so they're having internal debates. Should we keep them? Should we not keep them? They're almost acting like I asked you your order at Dunkin' Donuts. Like, should I get this coffee? Should I not get this coffee? Should I buy this rug? Should I not get this rug? And honestly, that's how I think they view the managerial well, job. Like, yeah, I guess we could bring in Joe Espada. And I guess much like Aaron Boone, you foobarred my order. Because <laughs> I didn't I didn't order what I want. Right? Are how you Steinberg, talking to me? How Steinberg thought he put together uh, a winning lineup. Good. And you didn't get it done, whether it's Cashman or Boone. I thought I had a brilliant order from Starbucks, and yet I didn't get what I asked for. Because I did ask for uh, five pumps of mint. You did. And he came back and said, you're mintless. Well, when no I went down you. to make that order, yeah. I said, excuse me, I'd like five pumps of mint. And the, right. the the lovely server, barista. Or whatever the barista, yeah. says, we have no mint. We have no mint. Every Starbucks so, in America's got mint. So I had to make a decision. That decision was, do I just improvise on my order for Craig or do I call him? And I said, you know what? You didn't call me. If he actually had enough energy to come downstairs with me when I was buying the Starbucks for us, then he could have corrected what he wanted the new order to be. Well, so since you weren't there, I was not there. Evan decided, you know what, then? No mint. Just well, five pumps of mocha and let's go. So while the Yankees are uh, having a bloodletting of their own today, Kyrie Irving did speak uh, last night on his own kind of like Instagram live type dealio. And of all the things he said, and we'll get to, to a lot of what he said throughout the day, there was one thing that stuck out to me. Because we've talked a lot about Kyrie not playing and the whole thing with the COVID and the and uh, the mandate and all that crap, right? And I guess we got to a point where I think I thought we were done this week talking about it. Maybe until they open up the season next week and it's a new story. No, no, this yeah. ends it. What ended it, what's going to end it was Kyrie Irving speaking. Yeah. And Kyrie Irving decided to go on IG Live and speak. So yeah. now I think we can finally have well, closure to this. If I may, I was going to get to the one thing that I took out of all of it, which I think is newsworthy. What's that? It's the only thing I've, I've, I don't care what he said about does he want to play, does he want to play, is his career over or not, is he for or against it? No. The one takeaway from the entire Instagram Live, which was damn near half an hour. Did you watch was, it? The yeah, whole of thing? I did. did you yeah. watch it multiple times? I watched it once. Oh. I don't need to watch things 20 <laughs> times. <laughs> I watched it unless twice. Unless it's, um, you know, certain videos that I'm done with in about 42 <laughs> seconds. Um, he claims that he was promised, guaranteed, that he was going to be allowed to play this year. Now, to me, that's the quote that needs to be investigated. Who made him that promise? Who guaranteed him that he could be unvaccinated and play? And here's what I came up with. Last Friday, we told you the story how they uh, redesignated the net practice facility as a private office space. That was done by the de Blasio administration. There is no doubt in my mind that Joe Side told Kyrie Irving, I'll get it done for you. You're going to play. And he went to the de Blasio administration, and the best he got was... We're going to let you practice by redesignating the Brooklyn Net practice facility as a private office space so he could practice. Joe Sy failed him in that promise. So Kyrie's thinking, all right, the owner's politically connected. He's going to get me an exemption. I'm going to be allowed to play. Pretty much his words last night. And the best Joe Sy could do was allowing him to practice. So that's how that played itself out. They thought they had the political juice to change the law specifically there was... to allow Kyrie Irving to play. And what they found out was you can't trust de Blasio, and he didn't come through. Well, there was a disconnect because Sean Marks at the beginning of training camp said, I am very confident 
all players will be vaccinated and good to go. Everyone will be available. Why did Sean Mark say that? Why did Kyrie Irving say last night, hey, I was under the impression there was going to be an exemption? Because that's essentially what he said. And to me, that was my biggest takeaway as well. Because I'm trying to figure out the future as well. Like, okay, is he going to get vaccinated? What's going to happen? My take from last night is he'll play once there's an exemption for him. He'll play once the rules in New York City change. Do I think any of that stuff's going to happen? Probably not. But why did Kyrie Irving believe there was going to be an exemption? And why did Sean Marks believe that player was going to be vaccinated? Were they even talking to each other? Was... Kyrie Irving getting that impression from Joseph Tsai? Was he getting that impression from the people around him? How is Sean Marks getting the impression that Kyrie is going to be vaccinated? I took out a major disconnect between Kyrie Irving and the Brooklyn Nets. And where it stands now, to me, just watching it three times last night. Three times. Twice and a half, really. Why? Why? Because I was confused. Because I was confused. Why did you watch that three times? Because I, he was. You have nothing else going on in your life. Like, do you not love your family? It was four in the morning, Honey, bro. Why are you watching it again? Everybody and sleeping. again and again. Because I needed woke to up at four in the morning to watch that twice. I needed oh to figure God. out the hieroglyphics of what Kyrie was specifically well, well, saying. We're gonna let you hear it a little bit later on in today's show. We're and he ain't getting vaxxed. That's what I've come down to. Yeah, and he won't that. play until either the rules in New York City change. Or he gets what he was promised, oh. an exemption. Somebody made him a promise and didn't come through. That's the owner and the mayor. Those are the only two guys that could have made such a promise. 